In this video, I'm gonna go through the common causes of OSD issues with HD0 and show you how to solve them. My goal is to give you a set of steps you can take if you aren't seeing an OSD at all or if your OSD is garbled. There are several possible things you can try, but we're gonna go through them in a priority order, starting with the one that's most likely to solve your problem. Let's see if we can get your OSD working. By far, the most common cause of OSD issues on HD0 is not having matching firmware between your HD0 receiver and your VTX. In many cases, if that firmware version doesn't match exactly, you're not going to see an OSD at all. This means that when you buy a new VTX or if you buy a bind and fly HD0 drone, you need to flash that VTX with the same version of the firmware that you're using on your receiver. If you don't know what version you have on your receiver, go ahead and flash both the receiver and the VTX with matching firmware versions. I'm also going to mention that in some cases, reflashing the firmware can fix issues. I'm not exactly sure why this happens. I don't know if sometimes the firmware doesn't flash correctly or what the deal is, but it never hurts to try reflashing the receiver and the VTX with the same version as a troubleshooting step. And if you don't know how to flash the firmware on HD0, I have a video on that, so I'll link it down in the description. It's a really quick guide that shows you how to flash that firmware, so you might check that out. The next thing to check is to make sure you've entered the correct CLI commands and make sure you've configured MSP properly for the VTX. I'm focusing on Betaflight in this video, so if you're using a different flight controller software, make sure you refer to their instructions. But for Betaflight, you'll want to go to the CLI tab and enter the correct two commands to enable canvas mode and select the correct UART. If you're not sure what I mean by these CLI commands, I have an HD0 setup video that goes through all that. I'll link that below and that has more information on what I'm referring to with these commands. Now, after you enter the commands, one thing that I like to do to check and make sure it worked properly is I query the value of those commands. I'll show you on the screen how to do that. This is a good step to make sure you entered them properly and to make sure the flight controller accepted those commands. Once you're done, make sure you type save and hit enter to make sure that the values are saved into the flight controller firmware. Another thing that's very easy to miss is that on the ports tab in Betaflight, you have to enable MSP for the UART your VTX is connected to. This is a critical step and if you don't do this, your OSD won't work at all. Make sure you set the value here and then click save down at the bottom corner to save that value. If you're still having trouble, the third thing I'd check is to make sure that your VTX is wired to your flight controller correctly. You'll want to make sure that the TX and RX pads of your VTX are wired to the RX and TX pads of an available UART on your flight controller, and you'll want to make sure that you connected TX to RX and vice versa. And make sure that those solder connections are good and strong. If you have a weak solder connection and if it's sometimes not making a full connection, then you might see a random character appear in your OSD or you might see your OSD be more garbled. Definitely make sure you have good solder connections. There are a few other things to mention here. One thing is that you need to use a real UART with the VTX. With some accessories, you can get away with using soft serial where it emulates a UART, but that doesn't provide enough speed for HD0, so make sure you're using a physical UART on the flight controller. And you should also make sure that you've connected to the TX and RX pins of the same UART on the flight controller board. That's an easy mistake to make when you're looking at a pinout. Finally, some flight controllers seem to have a UART that just doesn't want to work. It could be a resource conflict where that UART is shared with something else on the flight controller board, or in some cases, maybe the UART is just out of spec or not working properly. If you have additional UARTs available on your flight controller board, it's never a bad idea to just try moving it to another available UART and trying that. It helps eliminate that as a problem. The next thing I'd wanna do is check some things in your flight controller software. The first is to make sure you're using a supported version. At the time of this recording, if you're using Betaflight, I'd recommend at least using version 4.2.9, and I believe that is the minimum supported version for HD0. If you're using a different flight controller software, check the website and just make sure that the version you're on is a version that supports HD0. Next, I'd check and see how many OSD elements you're using. HD0 doesn't really have a maximum number of OSD elements you can add, but the more OSD elements you have, the harder you're trying to push that hardware and the more data you're trying to send to the VTX. And so if you're seeing a garbled OSD, one possible cause could be that you're trying to send too much data and you have too many elements on the screen. So a good troubleshooting step would be to try taking a bunch of those elements away, make your OSD really minimal, just have the things you really need on there and see if that improves your issue. 
Finally, if none of that works, you might consider reflashing your flight controller firmware. That can solve some issues. Before you do that, make sure you've done a diff and saved that file so that you have all your configuration settings so that you can restore them after you flash the firmware. But that can be a good step just to make sure everything's cleared out and make sure your flight controller firmware is set up properly. So that really covers the main causes of issues with the HD Zero OSD, and hopefully yours is working properly after you try those things. If you are still having trouble with it though, I've got a link down in the description below to the HD Zero Discord, and I'd encourage you to join that Discord and post in the help channel for more assistance. There are many knowledgeable users there, and I know that they'd all be more than happy to help you get your system set up and working properly. But like I said, I hope that did solve your issue, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to check out the other HD Zero guides on my channel. Thank you for watching and happy flying.